Governor-elect Bill Haslam, Ms. Chrissy Haslam family, will you please come forward. The oath of office will now be administered to Governor-elect Haslam by Chief Justice of the Tennessee Supreme Court, the Honorable Cornelia A. Clark. Then if you will raise your right hand, please, and repeat after me. I, Bill Haslam. I, Bill Haslam. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That as governor of the state of Tennessee. That as governor of the state of Tennessee. I will support the Constitution of the state of Tennessee. I will support the Constitution of the state of Tennessee. And the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the United States. And that I will perform with fidelity. And that I will perform with fidelity. And faithfully execute the duties. And faithfully execute the duties. Of the office of governor. Of the office of governor. To which I have been elected. To which I have been elected. And which I am about to assume. And which I am about to assume. To the best of my skill and ability. To the best of my skill and ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. To present to the people of the great state of Tennessee for the first time, the 49th Governor of Tennessee, the Honorable Bill Haslam. Yeah. Thank you. Let me begin by thanking you for placing your confidence in me to serve as your governor. With humility, I accept your trust to be a responsible steward of our state's resources. As my friend Lamar Alexander says, being the governor of your home state is a high honor. And if that state just happens to be Tennessee, well, it doesn't get any better than that. The road to public office traverses over paths that are long, challenging, and often partisan. Our democratic system asks good men and women to stand for election as Republican, Democrat, or Independent. After the voters speak freely and openly through the ballot box, the time comes to set aside those things that separate us and join our hands and our hearts together to aspire to greatness. Now is the time to help Tennessee reach its potential. Speaking of aspiring to greatness, Governor Bredesen, thank you for a job very, very well done. I think the applause you heard earlier was heartfelt applause among the people here representing six million Tennesseans for your great work. And to your wife, Andrea Conti, as First Lady, you set the tone to raising awareness of crime victimization and crime prevention. Thank you for what you added to our state as well, Andrea. <laughs> Governor Bredesen, you often use nautical analogies to describe your ship of state. You stood at the helm in good times and through some that were more tumultuous, and you never veered off course. Today, a new set of hands will grab hold of those oars and pull with the currents, sometimes against, toward a new horizon. Our goal is simple. Top-tier education for our children, retraining for those out of work and underemployed, and a healthy lifestyle. All three will make Tennessee number one in the south Southeast for high-quality jobs. Going forward, the governor's responsibilities will be different. Compared to 20 years ago now, the compared to 20 years ago, efficiency now is the operative word because resources are fewer. There is no other choice. Today, as we begin writing a new chapter in our state's history, I ask you, the elected state senators and representatives, to join with me in rolling up our sleeves and going to work. Our measure of effective state government is whether our citizens are served well and at the lowest possible cost. The people of Tennessee are our customers and we will be all about great customer service. In business, our goal was to make sure that every employee was either taking care of a customer or taking care of someone who was taking care of a customer. As mayor of Knoxville, our goal was to listen, to lead, to be open and transparent, and to get things done. State government will do no less. Today, reality is a landscape created from fewer financial resources, but one that still provides for the common good. There are opportunities before us. We cannot do or be everything. We have to exercise good judgment as we set priorities. The path we will travel will not be smooth and there will be a few bumps along the way. But we will successfully navigate, learning new ideas and building on existing experiences. This sense of hope and optimism comes from the knowledge that guiding principles serve as anchors in times of challenge. They empower us to do more and help us seek simplicity 
in moments of uncertainty and confusion. As your governor, I promise to be a good listener and a continuous learner, to lead with grace and humility, and when faced with adversity, to respond with determination. And finally, I will work hard. In business, as a mayor, as a candidate for governor, I have learned that nothing replaces hard work. After over two years of preparing to be here, I am ready and excited to get to work. I hope you will join me today along the path that we start blazing that will shape the future for Tennessee. Thank you for your support, for your encouragement, for your prayers, and for your commitment to making Tennessee a better place to live, work, and to raise a family. Thank you very, very much.